Hello and welcome to day 13. My name is Tammy Davis and I am your mentor and guide in this 30 days of essential oils. Today I want to talk about Melissa, otherwise known as Lemon Balm. Now, if you're new to my channel, I want to thank you very much for tuning in and joining us here. I um, invite you to also go check out the, um, the first segment I did called 31 Days of Essential Oils, which I recorded between April and May of this year, 2019. There is a corresponding blog on my website, which is can be found at synergistance.com, um, aptly titled 31 Days of Essential Oils. There will be one to go along with this one as well. Um, I've been a bit behind with the writing just because I've got a number of writing projects. I did take some of the summer off from doing anything along these lines. So please forgive me and just know that I'm back at it again. Um, for those of you who have been with me this entire time, just know how much I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone who is tuning in and your participation, your questions, your encouragement um, are priceless. So just know that it, it is very well received. Um, but like I said, today we're going to talk about Melissa. Um, as you know, or you may not know, um, I do come equipped with 30 years, 30 plus years at this point. And um, between pharmacology, aromatherapy, which I am internationally certified as a master clinical aromatherapist. Uh, I also have extensive studies in plant constituents and their relationship to human health and genetic um, or I should say the human genome, which does include the study of the epigenome. Um, beyond that, I have focused as well on um, nutrition, the science of nutrition more specifically, because the way the body breaks down nutrients and uses them is crucial to this work. That is the reason why, um, if you're not familiar with it, that I actually call myself an alchemist, because I like to pair um nutrient-rich foods and adaptogen herbs with the oils. The reason why is because the oils do not contain nutrients. They are signaling molecules. In other words, they are lipophilic chemicals with the ability to um, influence genetic receptor activity. If anybody tells you that that's a mistake, please encourage them to come talk to me or to just do a little bit more research because lipophilic chemicals um, are what activate and deactivate, um, in other words, influence genetic activity, whether it be an essential oil, a hormone, a neurotransmitter, um, a food additive, um, personal care chem chemicals, you know, all of those like thousands of chemicals that have been approved by the FDA to be included in your personal care, a lot of them are lipophilic. As a matter of fact, there's over 45 million chemicals currently being consumed around the planet, with 70,000 of them, just over, you know, 70,000 plus, having been confirmed as endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors would be lipophilic chemicals. Um, what's more, um, we have, if you hear a voice in the background, that's actually, sorry, that's my iPad talking. It should stop here in a moment. Um, bothering me. Uh, anyway, so um, when I was doing my um, my one course called Breaking the Cycle of Disease Management, I actually ran across um, PowerPoint presentations that were had been put together for chemical company employees to remind them how important it was to wear protective gear as they were working with a lot of these chemicals as they are endocrine disruptors. Now, what do I mean by that? These are merely chemicals that have the ability to influence hormonal activity. Um, that's, but they just basically take the place of, or they, I shouldn't say they take the place of, but they act like our hormones. They don't necessarily, are, they're not detectable in blood tests, but they do act like these hormones. In, in, in other words, they're signaling activities throughout the system. And this is the reason why the body is so environmentally taxed. What's worse is we are, we are, are also emotionally polluted and that will contribute to this stress response that we're having. And that's the reason why I'm talking about the oils, because they have the ability to offset these effects because the body will um, respond to a natural chemical before it will respond to a man-made chemical. This is one reason why it's important to never combine your oils and your medications unless you know exactly how they're 
being metabolized by the body. Um, and you also don't want to duplicate the mechanism of action. Otherwise, you could have adverse reactions such as allergic type reactions, rashes, you know, pain, or you could have um, an additive effect, which sometimes people will go, well, you know, if I'm sleepy and I need to get some sleep and I use something and it makes me really, really sleepy, that's a good thing. Not necessarily, because um, what if it happens at the wrong time of day? So, if you know, my, my suggestion is if you're using medication and you're not liking the results of your medication, then please go back to your physician and speak with them directly. Do not take it in your own hands to try and add to this, meaning to enha you're not enhancing the effects of the medication. You're potentially causing harm to your own system. So duplicating the mechanism of action is not advisable. So like I said, if you're not happy with the reactions that you're getting or the results you're getting, please take it up with your doctor before going and trying to duplicate that action. The other type of um, adverse reaction is one that's silent, which you don't ever know about until all of a sudden years later. So I did a whole video on that. Um, I may not explain it as well there, but let me know if you have any questions about that. And this, it's an important thing to remember when it comes to this oil because Melissa, um, also known as Lemon Balm, um, has the it's it has citral in it and citral is a known sedative and um, the significant oh there's all kinds of noises around here today <laughs> the significance to that is when it's combined with um, CNS depressant medications you end up with a lot of times the additive effect or in the case of Melissa I've actually seen it have the opposite effect which means if you're taking something to sleep and you use Melissa as a um, as a, an additional support, um, I have actually witnessed in clients where it actually created the exact opposite. So they ended up with extreme levels of anxiety and difficulty sleeping. So that's another adverse reaction that can potentially happen. It's just the exact opposite of what you were hoping for. So being aware of that this can happen, that's, one, that's another reason why you don't want to duplicate the mechanism of action again because it has a lot to do with how it's also metabolized in the body. Um, but we all know Melissa or Lemon Balm to be very calming, to use it for sleep. It's also very good for spasms. But primarily it's very supportive of the autonomic nervous system and helping just to kind of de-escalate that stress response that I was talking about. The stress response is a natural reaction. It's not a bad thing. It does lead to inflammation, yes, when it goes on and never is never relieved. And there's a lot of movement these days to create stress relief. However, we have to be able to, to generate that at the cellular level. And that's where the oils really come in because they have the potential to relieve this, um, too many voices, have the potential to relieve systemic distress and when we're talking about this with regards to medication, it becomes a concern. At the same time, this is also something that's very beneficial for children. Now, that said, another thing that I've experienced, and I've actually seen children have the opposite reaction. So that's a very important thing to remember when it comes to essential oils. And that is just because it has listed properties does not mean those are the properties you're going to get. The epigenome is designed to adapt according to what the body needs in that moment. In other words, it, it's constantly switching itself off and on, activating, deactivating, because th th it's, re it's reacting to the, the external environment, not to mention the fact it's trying to keep your own inner world regulated. So it's important to um, understand that because, and this is why smaller amounts are always good to see how you're, you, know, you or your, someone you're working with will respond. Because if the epigenome has been significantly taxed, it, it doesn't necessarily just mean the MTHFR, it doesn't mean um, COMT, I mean, none of the, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking of all of the different um, genetic processes that are listed on these tests, you know, nitric oxide synthase, NOS, um, SUOX, um, uh, I'm forgetting all of them right now, but I think you get you know where I'm going with it. So, but the other component to that is the CYP450 enzymes. Those also change, and science knows this. This is part of how medications are designed: is to alter the way the body metabolizes as well as eliminates. It kind of increases it, it slows it down to maintain blood serum levels and so forth. So the enzymes are also adaptable, 
And this will occur also depending on what, the, you know, even in your own processes. So this is not just an external experience. This is also an internal experience depending on your needs. So if you have a child that you're trying to use Melissa with and they have an adverse reaction to it, meaning it makes them more excitable, please know that that does not necessarily mean that the, that Melissa is not good for them forever. It may mean that they're not good for them for right now. And the best approach for that would be to go after the digestive system. Now, sometimes Melissa is good for that, but there's better ones that you can use that would really support the digestive system and, um, and helping to improve the way, um, number one, helping to improve the way macronutrients are broken down. Sorry, I was thinking about something there. As well as... Um, relieving because once the macronutrients are broken down more effectively that actually begins to relieve the distress in the system because larger particles floating throughout the system will actually um, trigger a stress reaction and an immune reaction and so it keeps the system in this chronic level of distress however if once we can begin to break those macronutrients down now you can you've taken steps to relieve that um so that's where I would, um, that's where I would start. I mean, like I said, because I'm, I'm, I love Melissa, and at the same time, I've seen some real excitability come out of people using Melissa. So this is one that, although it is um, somewhat of a favorite of many people, I would be, I would just use it with caution. I mean, it's not like, it's not necessarily one of my favorites just because of the variability in its effectiveness. Um, and again, that is, it's very hugely, um, re it really depends a lot on, on where your epigenome is. And so I wouldn't recommend Melissa as a starting point. I would say that would, might be something that you would could, you might would could have. Wow. You could actually introduce you know, in a month or so, once you've done taken some steps to um, support the autonomic nervous system and support the digestive system. And so a couple of oils that are come to mind right away that are safe with medications would be coriander and palmer rosa and cilantro would be another good one. If, if, you know, as you're listening to this and you realize that anxiety and restlessness and so forth are an issue but you might be a little bit concerned based off this information to use. I would start with these other ones first. And then if that be, con continues to be a problem, but you've done some of the steps to um, work with, I mean, and you might even consider blending those three with the Melissa to see how it does. It might actually have a better result. Okay. And again, that really is dependent on the individual. But I have done. Melissa is not exactly one that I run to in these times of anxiety. Oftentimes I'll go to like something like, coriander. It's very calming. Marjoram sweet, which is the one I'm actually going to talk about tomorrow, is another one. So these are all, and, and this what we can something we can take into consideration when we're talking about blending. And if this is something that if you really are drawn to, Melissa, as long as you're not taking sleep medications and it's, or your children are taking sleep medications. And for all I know, um, now that I think about it, the one child that I have in mind right now um, that, that had issues with it, was actually taking melatonin, and I don't condone that one. I don't. I do not recommend taking anything the body can produce. That's just me in a nutshell. <laughs> and um, so she was actually taking melatonin, and the potential for interactions there at the liver were quite good. So that could very well be what happened. That was the adverse reaction because she was taking melatonin to sleep, and then her mother introduced Melissa, and it just kind of blew out. But I, you know, this was during a time when I hadn't. Um, really researched a lot of these components and it's difficult truthfully to get everybody to go just to stop taking everything that they're doing um you know and it's hard to have ha and it's hard for people to wrap their head around the idea that if they're taking something that the body naturally is supposed to produce basically what you're doing is you're sending a message not to produce it so and serotonin is actually used to produce melatonin melatonin is a hormone so now you're talking about a hormonal imbalance or instability in the hormonal system, which is understandable in a body that's chronically stressed. I know we're talking about a child, but she was having, and she was, um, she actually had some significant health issues that would have caused this level of distress. And so the pediatrician suggested melatonin because we all have it in our mind that that's a natural thing to do. However, 
I did my best to convince mom to, um, to, to step her down, but she was so afraid and so reluctant that she could trust anything because the melatonin seemed, seemed to help from time to time. So that's, kind of going off in another area, but like I said, I do not ever recommend taking a supplement that of, of a, anything that the, of a chemical that the body can naturally make, whether that be, um, and it, again, it depends whether or not you're taking medication. In the case of melatonin, absolutely not. You can definitely bolster serotonin and improve the, the hormonal production and, while calming the body without having to replace the melatonin. So that's what I'm going to say about that. But that would be why the now, like I said, now that I'm putting this, this talk, because it's been years since I've talked about that particular case, but now that I'm putting that all together, that would be the reason why Melissa doesn't work. So again, that's another duplication of, uh, duplication of the mechanism of action. And so you just really want to avoid that. So having said that, as long as there's no supplementation, like any kind of sleep su supplementation, Melissa might be a really good, would be a good source because it does help to stabilize the hormonal system to a degree because it really is very good for the liver as well. But the medication has to be completely out of the picture. And as I mentioned, children are taking a lot of sleep supplements as well. And this is the only time that this particular oil would be any good at all would be in that case. So I think I've said everything I want to say about Melissa. Let me know if you have any questions about it in the comments below make any suggestions that you might have. I do want to remind you that I do have an, a monthly newsletter where I am doing the pairing with the nutrition and the oils. I do not do that here. There is going to be a blending segment starting up once I complete these that will start talking about how to incrementally, and I'm not talking about two drops of this and five drops of that. I'm not I'm talking about how to pull different oils in to have, you know, the most synergistic, um, to have to create synergy, a, a really powerful synergistic blend that encompasses everything that we're trying to do with the body. So we're going to talk about that, in a di like I said, in a, di in a different series. But in the meantime, please visit my website, sign up for my newsletter, um, visit me um, on Instagram and Twitter, and I also have Aromatherapy as a Lifestyle, which you can um, click the link in the box below as well and request to join that group. It's just a closed group because I don't want it's it's my life it's my life work and I just don't want it completely searchable um, on the internet all right so thanks again for tuning in you guys take care until tomorrow